So this is the first of two tutorials to show you how to make the screw. The first part is going to do a lot with the cross section. And to do that, we're going to turn on the auto extrude revolve sketches in section mode option, which uh, we'll make use of here. So then the part I've given you, we have some, I've created some points so you can make the exact same thing that I made. And I'm going to snap to those here with our cylinder tool. Here we're in section mode as opposed to sketch mode. We'll make two cylinders. And now we'll get out auto extrude. So the way this works is when you're in section, it sweeps along the edges and faces off of which you pick. And here you can see as I am sketching a line, it's really sketching a cylinder or a cone depending on what angle I put it on. Actually, we're just going to go straight up to the top here and uh, ex extend a new face out. And we'll come down here and snapping to 45 degrees in the side. And you see when we release, it adds that material to my screw, which is pretty neat. We'll use more of that in a minute. Just while we're over on this end, we can throw some rounds in. So as you may already be aware, basically every tool in space claim somehow works in section mode and pool is no exception. Okay, so now we're going to go over here and draw the front and I'll throw a sphere here because the tip is kind of rounded and I'll grab our tangent arc and we'll do this again you want to make sure the top uh, face is pre-highlighting so we walk that over and there we have the front of our screw while I'm here in the section we'll also go ahead and make the first part of our thread we're going to save the tricky part for the second half of the tutorial and I'm going to put that core of the screw into a new component because I want to temporarily uh, isolate it from other modeling operations. So good practice in space claim is to keep your solids separated in different components until you're ready to merge them together in the end. So we sketched a triangle, went into pool, and we will select that face and alt select any revolved face and uh, pick on the revolve button say revolve helix and we want this to be right handed so we'll say right handed uh, we also need to set our pitch which in this case is 1.9 millimeters and here we go and now we can pull along the way to create our helix and we don't really care how long it is we'll make it extra long because now we can come in and trim it So now we'll come in using section mode so we have this face automatically created. Notice how it'll snap to our intersection with the helix, which is pretty nice. Extend it in a little bit using the pull tool. And we'll do a combine to get rid of it and that extra portion we don't want. And now we have the beginning of our screw. And stick around for phase two where I'll show you how to do some surface modeling to make the front part of the threads. So in part two of our screw example, uh, we're going to make these threads on the front. And the tricky thing about these threads is that they actually need to become smaller as we go. So the trick with this type of thing is to set yourself up with construction geometry. And what we're going to do is we're going to start making some surfaces that we can then inscribe curves on uh, by intersecting surfaces with other surfaces and then we're going to use those curves to generate the surfaces we actually want. So first step is to construct the surfaces. And I'm going to start by drawing the outside profile of this helix. So no matter what the pitch is and so forth, I want to have a curve here that represents where the uh, crest of the thread should be. And I'm using the auto revolve feature highlighted in the last presentation. So we're also going to connect up the base and I copy pasted the surface so we have a spare one for the other side of the base. So now we have three curves that define where, our, where this helix is going to uh, be driven from. 
So while we're here, let's put these on a different layer so everything's more clear. And we'll give ourselves a new layer. And also, let's give ourselves a new component for these surfaces we're about to create. So I'm going to create one line, then offset it onto two. I can do this conveniently because this is symmetric. So now I've got uh, three lines, which I'm going to use to be to define the helices. So the first helix is going to be of the same pitch as the um, the one we just made. So we'll pull that out. So this intersected with the outside surface to find what will become the crest of the thread. Now this guy on this side is going to have a slightly longer pitch, 2.1. The other one was 1.9 millimeters. And that, so they intersect each other somewhere up ahead. And similarly, this guy is going to get a shorter pitch. 1.7 millimeters. And now you can see they all intersect in the same spot down the way. So this represents how our um, cross section is going to get thinner. So now we will combine these together. Before we do, actually, two of these surfaces have joined into one because we sketched them off each other. So we'll go ahead and split them up using cut and paste and put the pasted one back on the right layer. So now we can start to combine these together. And we'll do that using our Make Curves option in Combine. So let's hide these guys because we don't need them anymore. And now I'll take another two of these. And we've got another set of curves. And finally, we'll do it to the third set. And also, you can see we have a spiral curve there. And these are what we're going to use to create our surfaces. So I'm going to turn off uh, a layer with the points on it and hide the lines because we don't need to see that anymore. And here are the three surfaces with the curve, so we'll grab a pair of them and do a blend to make one side. And similarly, we'll do it to the other side. Just pick these two curves. And there you can see we have both sides of our screw. Let's get a better look at that. Hide these guys that we don't need anymore and we'll turn on the center again and maybe to make it even more clear we'll make that opaque so we can see what it's going to look like this is kind of a preview before we merge it together so again using combine pick the center pick the threads which are separate pick that guy and now you see we have a beautiful version of the threads on the tip of a wood screw. Hope you enjoyed.